If you've watched a few of our previous videos, or you've read some of the articles I've done in Fusion Magazine, you probably know I've got a bit of a thing for French computers. And this is mostly revolved around the Thomson range, which is a fairly big range of computers. Uh, we've got quite a few of them, we've covered quite a few of them. But there were, of course, other French manufacturers. And today we're going to cover one a machine from one of those, uh, a company called Excel Vision. And here it is. This is the EXL100. And we see, probably just about see the XL Vision logo there, a little butterfly, very nice. So we have uh, uh, orangey, it was obviously slightly more orange than that at some point, uh, on off button. I had to repair this, I'll go through that a bit later. That's actually momentary. That's a reset button. Uh, here, this is what looks like a port is actually an infrared. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, this is uh, the actual cartridge slot in there. Again, more explanation later. Uh, I don't have a complete set, and the reason for that being, so obviously the keyboard here, but uh, in this drawer would normally, which uh, again was something I had to repair and I'll explain later, uh, normally there would be two joysticks in here that came with it. Now, there you go. These, those, like, oops, sorry, I'm slightly to one angle. <laughs> those, like the keyboard, would have been their uh, infrared. So uh, I think the camera might pick up. No, the camera, the camera, this camera doesn't quite pick up the, uh, the infrared um, diodes. But yeah, so this uh, this is infrared, like the joysticks would have been. Uh, it's powered off of one PP3 battery, so they're rectangular ones. Um, it was fortunately uh, batteryless when I got it, which was good. Uh, this isn't entirely working. I have given it a brief test. To, I Literally today, I've been waiting to do this video on this machine. Uh, today I got a, a cartridge rip, my first cartridge, so I could actually try it out. There's no basic in ROM or anything, so I have got the basic ROM cartridge for it. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately some of the keys don't work. Most of them do though, so at least we know that the keyboard itself is working. So if I bring this up, try not to crush the buttons. There we go. Uh, there we are. So we look at the back. Uh, this is a kind of standard figure of eight connector. Obviously this is a European machine, so we can just use a UK plug in it. I'm actually not at the moment, I've got a Euro one, I need to replace that. That's an uh, add-on, I think um, the disk drive mostly used that. Uh, this also would have had one of these surrounds, but it's missing, at least I think it does. And that's another kind of expansion slot. Uh, here you'll see there's two, oop, two little cutouts, and that's where the cables come through. So what we've got in here, uh, I'm not sure what that one is actually. It might be RGB, but I will. No, that's the cassette port. That's the cassette port. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so a cassette port, and this is the SCART lead, EuroSCART, which of course it kind of goes hard on the squeaking. There we go, that pops in there. So that's actually removable and has a EuroSCART connector on the other end, although it's Paratel, so can't just use it in a British TV and expect it to work. Uh, see there, 220 volts at 50 hertz. And yeah, there's the big spring, which is for the actual joystick door. And that's pretty much it for this machine. It's very nice and simple. <laughs> it's quite a nice looking machine. It's obviously very... Uh, much more PC-like than uh, some of the machines, other machines. We've got the Thompsons, which are much more home computer-like. But this was, as you can tell with the included joysticks, definitely built for the home. This was, like the Thompsons, included in the uh, French government's uh, computers a school program. Uh, but uh, slightly less known than the Thompsons, and obviously over in England, even the Thompsons aren't that well known. Anyway, I love it. <laughs> it. This needs a bit of cleaning up. It's got some, some of the plastic has decolored. I did hope that it was just dirt, but it's not. It doesn't actually clean off, so it does look like the plastic has uh, discolored somewhat. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so I will turn it on 
and we will I'll show the the basic cartridge actually you know good, good. At the basic cartridge now I reach over here come in this giant plastic box kind of like a VHS box almost uh, a nice big manual and this is our cartridge in here so I'll put that to one side and uh, yeah the neat little little things little switch on the bottom you push up and then you get the contacts so you can actually insert it into the actual machine like so <laughs> Nice and neat. And it's just high enough for the keyboard to underneath. There was another version of the keyboard with a slightly better key uh, key layout with better caps uh, and not these soft membrane-y ones. Um, I have this one. I'm unlikely to get the others. Uh, you could also, obviously, like we saw the cassette port and the uh, interface, which would take a hard drive, so you could get you could load from tape and from uh, sorry disk drive, not hard drive, as well. Um, Again, things I'm probably not going to be easily get hold of. I will keep looking for them though, because um, I do like building up these machines. Um, but anyway, we've got cartridges and there's more available and I'm starting to reverse engineer that. But I've also got a, uh, a French guy has made a, a ROM already for it. So I've also ordered one of those as well. Uh, but I'll reverse engineer it anyway and make sure it's available for everyone to use. Um, not the guy, French guy's machine, that is of course his and I will not be releasing that <laughs> uh, right so I will go and set up the video and we will take uh, a little look at this uh, the actual basic itself we can't get very far because again a lot of these keys are not working oh yeah of course a zerty keyboard because it's French of course uh, yeah a lot of these keys aren't working so we won't get very far but what we'll do is we'll do a bit of that and then we'll take a look inside the keyboard so we can see anything obvious right back in a minute right before we put the basic cartridge back in again. I figured I'd just boot up without any cartridge in. This is what we get, this little screen here, the Excel Vision logo, that lovely butterfly. I do like the butterfly. I, I just think it's a really, really nice logo. Um, it's a really clear picture as well, which I like. It's um, a decently uh, solid picture. And uh, yeah, obviously we're using the OSSC to convert the Paratel signal so we can get it through to HDMI. Anyway, <laughs> let's turn this off and then we will put a uh, the basic cartridge back in and we'll have a look at that right and this is it this is the basic screen it has not much to it hence the reason i wanted to show the splash screen first uh, most of the keys work so like the first couple one and two and escape don't work but three works four and five don't yeah and uh, like the next row is even better there's only a few others that aren't working on that next row and the net the row after that is almost perfect so the only thing that doesn't work on this row yeah is the return key and the row underneath that one yeah so yeah it, it kind of feels like it's yeah there's very few keys that aren't really working so I'm hoping this is going to be fairly easy to fix. Anyway, <laughs> there's a little beep as well when you push out. You probably heard that. Hopefully you heard that. I forgot the sound working. Um, so I think what we'll do is, um, I first of all, we'll have a look inside the actual computer itself uh, and we'll go over what I had to do to fix it. Well, not fix it. It was already working, um, but there were a couple of broken parts and I'll just explain what I did there. And then we will take a little look inside the keyboard as well. Um, I guess I'll talk about the what this computer is as well, like internally, uh, when we open up. So back in a sec. So I have uh, taken everything out. I've taken out the leads, everything. So we will flip this over, and a few screws. It's quite simple to take apart. There we go, six screws come out and we can just lift off the top. There's nothing holding it on, which I do like. <laughs> so, there's the machine. It's a very neat little machine. Uh, this motherboard is only, uh, well, it's held in by force, not anything else. And it's only got this one connector on it. So if you take off the power connector, you can just take out this motherboard quite easily. Easy to work on. Um, 
The uh, this was I don't know somebody been messing around with that in my one or quite warm, <laughs> uh, and it um, it's got little pegs that are supposed to go into the mother, into the actual motherboard itself, and they just weren't in there, so that was a bit dangerous. But the voltage regulator has not been broken; it's all working, so that's good. There's the actual transformer there, and that comes straight into this power lead, which is the first thing I had to fix, and that is using a, uh, a momentary a, a a latching switch of a, a kind and I don't know if I want to take this out to be honest it took a while to get it right anyway you can probably see that <laughs> if I zoom in you'll definitely be able to see it there you go and uh, fortunately this type of latching switch is fairly common and it was quite easy to find a replacement to go there and these just kind of sit in these little things and yeah they work uh, reset button was fine it's just a momentary switch this is our infrared uh, receiver there and obviously our cartridge slot with just this kind of gravity held door I don't think there's supposed to be anything else on that it just that's even normal right this was the other thing that was broken so this is across here so this is our drawer if I release it you'll see there's this little groove here so underneath the motherboard uh, you know we will remove the motherboard so let's remove the power lead <laughs> There's a little plug that's holding it on. So there we go. We can remove that motherboard fairly easily. And yeah, you see this little plastic pole here. And this pole kind of goes into these grooves. We lift that up. And they're shaped like that so that it goes in and gets trapped in one. And when you push it again, it comes out the other side. So uh, I can probably show that. So there we go. Then gets trapped in there. And when you push it again, it comes down the other side and it's untrapped. Uh, if it was down flat, that would work normally. It's been held up here, it doesn't. Yeah, so this had just come loose, so I just had to put it back in the track and it was working. Nice and a simple fix. <laughs> and if we just replace motherboard, again, nice and simple. And there, there's this little peg here, which there it is. It's over there and holds the motherboard in place. That's that's it. <laughs> and there we go. We can put that on. Yeah, this thing here is removable. Let me do this back up so I can bring this forward. I don't know why it's removable, but it is. Something to do with whatever plugs in there. I don't know. I don't have one, so I don't I can't tell. And yeah, so that's the internal machine. Right. Well, we should talk about this machine a bit because it is slightly different. There were two really main kinds of design that were popular, especially in France at the time. So you had machines based on the Z80 and machines based on the 6502. Very much the same as quite a lot of uh, Europe, actually, um, especially England. Uh, but this one isn't. This one's based around a, a whole bunch of uh, Texas Instruments chips. And that's because uh, the, some of the original designers, the original engineers behind this team, uh, used to work for Texas Instruments. So uh, this is going to be bad. Okay, I'm half French Canadian, but I'm definitely going to be uh, mullering these words, and I apologize immensely. Uh, Jacques Palpiquier, Victor Zebruck, and Christian Petiot. Uh, they all were previous of Texas Instruments. They'd helped to uh, like work on the, uh, the chip design, so when they decided to make their own machine, they went back to their old company and got machine parts from there. So it's based around a 7020 TMS chip uh, running at 4.9 megahertz, pretty rapid for the time. And it's uh, got, well, 34K in total, but some of that, well, a lot of that is shared with VRAM. Um, a 4K ROM, okay, there's not very much in there. It's mostly loading routines because there's no built-in basic. Um, and the graphics are a uh, again another obviously Texas Instruments chip, a uh, thirty five fifty six. So yeah, fairly different for the time, really. Um, the sound chip, which is a, a fifty two twenty again TMS, <laughs> uh, is not bad. Um, it's not a terrible sound chip at all, uh, and can also handle speech synthesis. Although obviously this being a French computer, most of the stuff built in. Well, all the stuff built in is for the French language. The um, yeah, the graphics that is capable of a 40 by 25 character text mode and a 320 by 250 graphics mode with eight colors. 
Um, and yeah, I mentioned the memory. It's 44K total, but that's 2K of RAM and 32K shared with VRAM. And um, yeah, so the this machine, when it first came out, which is 1984, uh, was priced around 3,190 francs. I didn't do the conversion. I don't know what that, that is. It's, it's a moderate amount, certainly, though. Um, and uh, it was replaced eventually with the XL Tel. Well, not replaced, but the new version came out of XL. Well, that really is just this with a built-in modem and a few extra changes, but not not a huge amount really. So yeah, it's not a terrible machine by any means, and could certainly uh, have kept up with a lot of the 8-bit machines around uh, at the time. Yeah, 4.9 megahertz. It's, it's not to be sneezed at, even on a um, a less powerful processor uh, running at that speed, that's still a pretty fair whack. Um, yeah, you can see the, the plethora of Texas Instruments logos around everything. That's, uh, yeah, there are a lot of them. A lot of them are also uh, in holders as well, which is good. Anyway, I think it's a really interesting machine. <laughs> uh, right, so bring it back up just a case again of just putting the case on top and then doing those six screws back up again so I will do that and then we will go and look at the keyboard now the keyboard does not have any screws at all so we will need to be using a uh, spudger to get these posts out here uh, I think what we'll do first though is we'll remove the battery obviously no spawn over there we'll leave that off why not uh, yeah and then we just have to prise these little pegs open okay that was more of a nightmare than I thought it was going to be <laughs> we go from the back first it's a bit easier um, trying to do the front yeah, that doesn't work quite so well. Right, so here we go. We've got the main board. So, I mean, it all looks pretty clean, I will say. It's a little bit of mess in there, but not much. Um, this looks clean as well. So why are those not working? We've got one capacitor there. Which looks fine. Um, got all these diodes, which are going to be for each kind of row. So maybe some of those are gone. That would be annoying. And then, of course, the decoder chip here. And if that's gone, then things get even wonkier. Um, well, I guess first of all, we need to do some continuity checking. So, put this back in place. And we know one and two keys weren't working. So that's over here. And these two. Right, well, they tap out, so that's not the problem. So, yeah, my concern then is going to be the chips or the diodes.
I've turned on the uh, desoldering station because I'm going to see if I've got a replacement cap. I may as well replace it. I don't think it's broken though. It looks and smells completely fine, but uh, well, let's see if we've got a replacement. Of course, 1,000 at 10 volts. I've got 1,016 volts, that'll do. There we are. So we may as well replace it as soon as we're here. So we may as well replace it as soon as we're here. Um, it's a really pleasing PCB. Oh, hello. There's something there that I didn't notice. That looks like a lot of corrosion. Hmm. Let's just check around here then. Okay, well that's still working. Oh, look at that though. Well, whatever it is, it doesn't clean off. Again, it doesn't appear to have affected anything either. It's not like something's got inside the, uh, the layers. But anyway, those aren't the buttons that aren't working. Well, at least... No, I think they're not the buttons that aren't, that aren't working, so... Yeah. Um, uh, the only other thing, of course, is if we take this off... Oh, hello. Space bar is separate to the rest of the uh, thing. So that goes that way. And to, oh, hello. Just so happens on those ones, there is some kind of liquid in there. It looks like some liquid's been spilled in there. So, it could be that something's been spilled in this keyboard and well, the, the, the potentially positive bit will be that it, all it's done is it stopped this from being as conductive. The potentially other side of it is that it's blown those diodes or something in relation to the keys that were affected. Uh, we can probably test those diodes. And we'll just clean these keys out first. And there's a lot of stuff coming off. Right, I think I'm not going to change that capacitor after all. Not because I think this has necessarily fixed it, but because I think, you know what, that capacitor just looks fine. There's no point changing stuff if it, if it looks okay. All right, let's put this back together. If it doesn't work, then the next step will be to try to work out well, then we probably will change the capacitor. Um, but also to work out what the um, these diodes are. Can't quite read the markings on them. And we'll have to test to make sure they're okay and everything. 
Completely screwless design this though, which is kind of impressive. Uh, this looks like it should be going through these holes here, but apparently not. Um, there's no, it's kind of a bit short if it does. I mean, I mean, it can, but it can go over there as well because there's actually no things going down there. And to put it back together, just push in all the clips and that's it. That's the keyboard <laughs> reconnected. Right, so I guess what we'll do turn that off and I guess we'll go and test it again um, if it's working I will show you if it's not I will do the summary and we will have to find a different way to repair it so either way I will see you in a bit okay as you can probably guess because we're here at the summary setup that that made no difference at all it didn't break anything else which is good but it didn't fix anything either, so I'm suspecting that those diodes are probably where we're looking at next. And that means I need to, well, probably take one out and use a magnifying glass to try to read the class of it to work out exactly what those diodes are. Um, uh, once we know what they are, we'll also know a decent way of testing them and also get replacements, of course. So, it's a lovely machine, though. <laughs> I think it's um I just I do I think it's it's a wonderful little design. It's um the engineering is really nice as well. The way everything's put in, it's it, apart from the the six screws on the bottom, most of the rest of it is basically toolless, and you just um take stuff out. The uh, keyboard is completely toolless, so you can just take it apart with a couple of prising tools, and that's it. I, I just I just like that kind of engineering. <laughs> it's really nice. Anyway. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, then please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to join our um, Patreon if you want early access videos or become a member for the same things. And hit the bell icon so you get told when future videos come out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. To get us through the week We're getting re-enthused Back to the past and the things we used We all know that our pasts were great Escaping the things that today we hate Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused